Tokyo to Amsterdam is about 10 hours and the city's a good stopover, especially this time of year. There are over 100 kilometers of waterways throughout the city connected by over a thousand bridges. And in May, it's the place to see flowers, lots and lots of flowers. Flowers so beautiful, they are worth singing about and the Dutch do love to sing. There are whites and yellows, reds and pinks, and even a river of purple. For someone who always forgets to send flowers, it's quite memorable. Bike is the best way to get around Amsterdam, and there are over one million of them in the city, more than the number of people. Do explore Amsterdam via boat for a closer look at canal living. People here were once taxed on the width of their houses, so the Dutch built high and narrow homes with hooks on the outside for moving furniture up and down. London is a short flight away. A ferry boat is a nice way to see the city. That bridge now stands in a man-made lake in Lake Havelsall, spanning the Amazon and Desert. This is the London Eye, a giant Ferris wheel on the banks of the Thames. Each capsule holds 25 people and it takes about 30 minutes to go around. Lots of street performers in London beware of aging rockers with whips and balloons. The squirrels happily take donations, but they prefer nuts over pounds. And even the authorities aren't shy about displaying their sense of humor. No further comment, and I'm glad I'm not on Facebook. Iceland is west and north, and this time of year the sun never really completely sets. The capital of Reykjavik is pretty hip, not many chain stores, a lot of personality, and boutique hotels with a lot of style. This is my buddy Helgi, who plays drums for Asgir, one of Iceland's better known bands. Their hit song, King's Cross, gets lots of play on Iceland airwaves and around the world. On the road, Iceland is full of natural attractions. This waterfall is pretty impressive. If you don't like the view from the front, you can always walk behind it. On the southern coast is Glacier Lagoon, where a glacier ejects icebergs, which then break apart into the warmer water. Well, relatively speaking anyway, they then head out to sea. There's the old saying that Iceland should be called Greenland, and here you can see why. Other times it feels like you're in a black and white movie. The black sand beaches and overcast skies give a Photoshop effect of stark raw beauty. Iceland has lots of geothermal areas, and this place has some serious energy to it. The water is boiling, and you think, wow, this can't be good, and then boom, you realize that it's good to be in the right place. So much for rising water, how about the falling type? This is Gullfoss, and at first glance it appears to disappear into the earth. Waterfall, water vapor, rainbows, and ice all in one place. And this is called the Blue Lagoon, home to cleansing and healing hot water and silica mud masks. They are soon building a five-star resort here, and I'm guessing the pool will be open late. From hot to cold, this is Silphra, and it's the home to the gap between two continents. The North American tectonic plate and the Eurasian plate are drifting apart here by about two centimeters per year. And the idea here is to drift between the continents. After a quick warm-up walk and briefing, we don thick dry suits, and then we are in the crack, so to speak. Visibility is about 100 meters, and although you stay dry, well, except for your face, the cold still takes your breath away, and so does the scenery. This is some of the purest water in the world, and all of us greedily have a drink. Don't ever pay for bottled water in Iceland, just go snorkeling. Icelandic horses are small, sure-footed, and hardy. They stay strong well into their 20s and have a very good nature about them. Yeah, if you have any questions, you need any sisters on the way, just give the guides a call. We'll be riding in front of them back. The riding here is top-notch, great terrain, and the Icelandic horse is famous for its fast and smooth gait that can reach 30 miles per hour. I think Iceland is a pretty good place to be a horse. Chris Nelson for the Channel 2 News.